and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today I am making a soap with apples in mind and the inspiration for that is this scent. It's called Leaves and it is a typical fall scent but it's so appley. It smells like fresh apples and apple cider and it's really delightful and one of the reasons I wanted to do apples is I got this, there it is, apple fruit puree. It's a baby food. It's just apples and a little touch of lemon juice to keep it from browning, so with lemon juice, which is citric acid. So um, it's pure apples. I, you know, you could make it yourself if you wanted to boil up some apples and puree them. I'm a cheat and I just buy the baby food, but that's going in there and I absolutely love fruit purees in soap. It makes such a dense, bubbly lather. It's like adding sugar to your lye water on steroids. It's super lathery, love a fruit soap. And so for the colors, I'm thinking apples. You got red apples, you got green apples. There's all kinds of colors of apples, but today I'm doing red and green. So for the red, I will do my trial by fire nurture soap. This is such a perfect red color in soap. If you have never tried this and you're a soaper, do yourself a favor, get some trial by fire. It's great. And then that's my red apples. And for my green apples, I have martini olive green. I know it's martinis, but I thought this was, it had enough of a yellow tint to it. So it kind of, for me, was thinking of Granny Smith type apples. Um, so these two together, those are my apple colors. I haven't decided what I'm gonna do on top yet. If I'm just gonna do a scoop or something, I'll know when we get there. Um, this fragrance does behave beautifully in soap. I've soaked with it before. It's wonderful. I think it's great all year round. So we're going to do an apple soap today. Let me get everything pulled together and we will come back and let's make some soap. All right, we are back and it's soap additives time and the fragrance is already in here because I've worked with it before and I know it behaves very nicely. So we're going to do the kale and clay, the colloidal oats and the fruit puree is going in here. So here we go with the clay, love it. Clay just adds a beautiful slippy, glidey feel to the um, lather of the soap and I love it. And colloidal oats, I just think oatmeal is wonderful. So I'm putting it in there, it's foody, why not? And here is my baby food. So this is basically just like a really fine um, applesauce almost. It's so nice, unsweetened. I did not put any sugar in the lye solution today because this has plenty of natural sugars so it will give me a beautiful lather without adding any extra sugar. When I do add sugar, it's a lather booster. I say it every video, but I still get asked all the time, why do you add sugar? Well, that's why. It makes really abundant, fluffy lather. And so this fruit puree will take care of that. So let's get this all blended up. Are back with the lye solution but first let's talk about the design idea I came up with I want to do layers today uh, a red layer and I have my trial by fire dispersed in a little distilled water here and in the pot swirl and then I'm gonna do a green layer on top I think let me think I was trying to decide if I wanted to do the red on the bottom or the green on I think I'm gonna do the green on the bottom <laughs> <laughs> All right, I've got it pulled together. We're gonna do an in the pot swirl green layer and then I'll texture that a little. Then we'll do an in the pot swirl red layer and that's how we're gonna design this soap today. I don't know why, I was just thinking about I wanted to try something different and I love layered soaps, so there we go. Uh, I am going to run my lye solution through a sieve because I made this a couple of days ago and it cooled off so it has some soda ash or um, just lye lint it's called and it's just some crystallized, it's not a big deal but I don't want chunks in my soap. So I will run it through my little colander here um, to make sure any of those chunks don't go into the soap. And I've water discounted for that uh, baby food, the apples. I use, I count that as part of the liquid portion, the um, baby food portion. There's the lilac, got that out. All right, so because I'm gonna layer this, I'm just gonna go up to a nice emulsion and we'll do the first layer and then I'll blend each layer as we do. So hopefully I'll have plenty of time to work and, you know, get it all in in the way that I have in my mind, you know, the design. Sometimes I have it in my mind and it doesn't come out, <laughs> and other times it does. So that's one of the fun things about soap making. So you can see it kind of turned caramelly here, and that's just the lye reacting with the sugars in that baby food, and it's caramelizing. But this fragrance doesn't discolor, so this should cure out to be a nice sort of beigey ivory color. There we go. 
So what did I say? We're gonna do green on the bottom. There we go, got the green. Let's get our first layer poured off here. It's the next day and here it is apples I decided I was thinking of different names to name this soap and I'm just gonna call it apples cuz you know you can't beat that it came out so pretty I did come down earlier today and steam the top it didn't have any soda ash but it was a little dull and because it's not a super fancy top I just wanted to gloss it up and when I say steam the top I take a little handheld clothing steamer and just run it along the top and it glosses it up because it's wet but when it dries this is a hundred percent dry and it keeps that nice shiny gloss to it and I just think it kicks it up a little bit this smells so good today I'm anxious to get in here and see how that bottom layer and the colors came out so let's get into this the lovely Olga and it's time to get into our first loaf. I really like the colors. I think these are really pretty um, and it smells so good today. Let me just say that we are smelling divine. Let me get this lined up here. All right. So these end pieces become quarter size slices and samples. That's what those are for. And let's see, oh, look how pretty. Very random in the pot swirl. We got the green apples, we got the red apples. I know there's so many other colors to apples, um, but I love it. Yeah, I think it represents, I'm so happy. Now this did have the fruit puree in there and I did put a blanket over this last night. It did go through gel phase. Um, so I didn't have any overheating issues. I came down, checked on it a few times just to make sure everything was good and no issues at all. So I put the wooden lid on my mold and then I just throw a little inexpensive fleece blanket over the top. That's how I insulate because my studio is very cool. Um, so gel phase was achieved and here we go. I'm so happy with these. All right, let's get into our next loaf so fun when we lived in virginia and our kids were younger we would go apple picking in the fall 
um, it's funny, I'm making an apple soap in the summertime, but you know, usually I think of fall time for apples. And I was always so amazed at the different varieties and different color ranges and everything of apples. It was just kind of mind blowing, this wine sap and these really dark purple, like black, I can't remember the name of them, but they were so dark, they were almost black colored, the apples, um, just incredible, all the different ones. I kind of like the hybrids. I tend to, like when I'm buying apples just for fresh eating, I like the Honeycrisp and the Pink Ladies. A little bit, I like very crunchy and maybe just a little bit of tartness in. A good Granny Smith is always good. I love it. Um, when I make pies, I think I used to use Macintosh for my apple pies, and now I tend to go more towards Granny Smith. I like a tartar apple in my pie because I'm adding sugar in there anyway. So I don't know why I'm getting off into the baking things. I just apples, I start rolling. My grandchildren love applesauce and I just think apples are wonderful. And there's so many to choose from, my goodness. I don't know that there's any other fruit that has that many varieties, maybe grapes. I don't know, if you know, let me know. I think maybe apples might have the most varieties for its type of fruit, am I wrong? All right, last loaf, loving it, love it. So if you are a soap maker and you have never worked with a fruit, a fruit puree before, I wanna encourage you to give it a try. The lather is amazing, it's easy to work with, it's got great label appeal, but really it's the lather that gets me with a fruit puree. It's just over the top, bubbly and luscious. I love it, so fun. So also, I just wanted to mention, I get a lot of questions on what uh, equipment I use and additives I use and everything. In the description box below, which if you're on a mobile device, it'll be a little upside down arrow or show more. If you click on that, I have an Amazon store with most of, I have links for most of the stuff that I use on an ongoing regular basis. So that would be the first place to check if you're interested in some of the equipment or additives that I use making soap. I have the different, um, silicone molds and all, all that kind of stuff. It's all listed in there. So if you've never checked it out, go check it out. And all that being said, I hope you enjoyed today's video. This was really fun to make. I am an Apple fan, so I hope you liked it. Thank you so much for joining me and have a wonderful day.